Hello everyone and welcome for the campaign Pirrus of Epirus. I will play the first scenario as second Alexander and first I'm gonna read the backstory of Pirrus of Epirus. Pirrus of Epirus 301 until 275 the before Christ or before the common era, probably before Christ since it's BC that they usually use nowadays. But let's go. As the wars of the Diadoc saw Alexander the Great's successors throw the Greek world into chaos, Pyrrhus of Epirus began as a small player among Titans. Will he become worthy of the legendary Hannibal Barca's judgment of him, the greatest general of the age, second only to Alexander? Or will his constant uphill struggle prove insur Montable. In this campaign, you will play as the Macedonians. Very good. And the icon is really beautiful. This shield and this helmet, that looks fantastic. How can a man make a name for himself when titans roam the stage of the world? When the heirs of Alexander the Great fight over who will succeed the greatest conqueror there ever was? My friend and master often asks me this question, and I always give him the same answer. Searching for greatness in this way is folly. One can only become content by refusing to give in to such desires. Pyrrhus, of course, politely calls me an idiot when I say this, if not by that exact word. For him, carving a legacy is the one thing that truly gives life meaning. He says, a man must fight unrelentingly to become stronger than all others until he finds himself alone on the throne of the world, just as Alexander did. To which I politely reply that he is an idiot, if not by that exact word. Pyrrhus was born on the edge of the thunderous storm that is Greek politics. At a young age, he was placed on the throne of Epirus, a small mountain kingdom on the fringe of the civilized world. But before he could get used to how the crown felt upon his head, it was ripped away. The Epirots rose up in rebellion against their young monarch and installed a man named Neoptolemus on the throne. He was a murderous, small-minded man who would sell his own mother for another province to rule. In other words, he was just a sort of unremarkable ruler that the people desired. Landless and crownless, Pyrrhus was forced to escape to the east. Here he joined the court of his brother-in-law, Demetrius, whose father Antigonus was quickly becoming the most powerful of Alexander's successors. Antigonus' growing power alarmed the others. From all over Alexander's broken empire, they now joined forces against him. The two great armies met near the town of Ipsus, in the heart of Antigonus's realm. Serving as one of Demetrius' commanders, Pyrrhus finally found a chance to test his mettle. Oh, that's great. It will be a very intense map. And by the way, the start itself is pretty... It's pretty critical to get this right. Because it is already a hard map. We are playing hard. There is an achievement. Uh, called what Alexander would have done or what Alexander would do something along these lines and you essentially you should protect every single town center every single ally town center must be protected but trust me it'll be a pretty hard and difficult scenario okay main objectives deliver trade cards to the allied camp each surviving card will bring additional resources to either you or your allies yeah, there is a first mission. You don't need to actually win this. But if you win, it gets a little bit easier, the scenario. If you don't, the scenario is, stays pretty hard. But even if we win that, that will not give to us an instant victory. <clears throat> now let's proceed. Pyrrhus is limited to the Bronze Age and a population of 75. You can ask your ally Demetrius for military assistance by placing fairies on the map. Antigonus, however, will not respond to such calls from a subordinate. So yeah, uh, essentially Antigonus is our boss and Demetrius uh, is our ally. 
so he's probably will take the fight with us and uh, the big man is antigonus so keep in mind that remember that you only have to focus on the enemy facing you to complete your objectives your allies will take care of the rest unless they explicitly ask for your help that's pretty complicated i have explored the scenario and it's actually a big deal if you pay attention to your allies especially if you're doing if you're attempting the objective the, sorry the achievement but the objective itself is pretty hard and for the macedonian army's great strength is its heavy infantry which have better line of sight and more precise armor than those other opponents we're playing as the macedonians so that's a, a much much good much better hoplite compared to the other hoplites at the bronze age that's a big advantage for us and we are restricted to the bronze age but one of our enemies is at the iron age pay attention to it guys <laughs> that makes scenario extra hard Beavus one green and a small force have been tested with delivering supplies to the antigonides he will take command of the right flank of the allied army once the battle begins uh, Demetrius, your purple, commands the center right of the Allied army. He trusts in your skill to command and will send his soldiers where you ask. His army is of a mix of infantry and cavalry. Antigonus three blue is the leader of your faction. His force occupy the left and center of the Allied base. And will do to have fight on those fronts. His army's men consists of powerful Macedonian infantry. Hmm. He is actually very good, but we need to protect him because our enemies are very powerful. The enemy side, on the enemy side, Seleucus for Red has in command of the second line. From his base at the rear of the enemy position, he will send his cavalry and bowmen towards all fronts, including yours. In front of him, Lysimachus, five sign, commands the first line of the enemy army. His Greek infantry are the most advanced enemy units, and it will be a tough match for Antigonus, but he will likely not advance on your position. Yeah, <laughs> let's see. Uh... Finally, Seleucus' son Antiochus, 6 orange, commands the eastern flank of the enemy army, right in front of where you are camped. His powerful cavalry will be your primary concern. Yeah, it's 3 against 3, but yeah, it's a pretty epic scenario in my opinion. Probably one of the best so far that I could see, so now let's play with all of you. Just maneuvers here at the beginning. On your feet, men. The armies have already lined up for battle. We must get those horses to our allies' camps before the assault begins. Some of Seleucus' men have snuck behind our lines. We cannot allow them to steal our supplies. Seleucus's men. Oh, 
Respects your skill and then. Otherwise, he would not have given you command of the right flank. Look to the north, my lord. The battle is starting. This is the end of the road for you, Antigonos. You cannot possibly stand up to the combined might of the Diadochi. I am the only true heir of Alexander here, Lysimachus. And I will show that today on the field of battle. Charge, men! Fury? Ooh, Pilaris. Okay. Okay, yeah, I got the resources. Mate. Ford, so crazy. Yuri, Ombus. Yuri, Alamas. Ombus. I can Keep up the pressure, men. We will have these dogs on the run before long. So you are the man that they sent to face young Hirus? A nobody from the mountains. What was the name of that little kingdom again? I will send a squadron there at once. Have a direction. Tear those abominations down, and let us fight like real men. Like we did in the old days. Is this the best you have, Antigonus? Alexander must be rolling in his grave, seeing you fight this poor. <laughs> Never fear me! As long as I remain standing, I will fight right alongside you! Oh, my God. 
Crush the enemy's eastern flank. Send word to Antigonus to commence the counterattack. We were too late, my lord. Antigonus's line has broken, and he has begun to retreat. This cannot be. We must cover their retreat as best we can. After me, men. Yuri, Alamas. Yuri. Stand firm, men. Victory will soon be ours. took for me. It's as simple as rushing.
to win the scenario <laughs> my first Macedonian victory it's just a plain rush you go rush straight away orange no piety nothing merciless destroy get rid of all stables and there you go you can right after that win the scenario cover the retreat without much effort if you leave for late game you are fried Despite having never lost a battle during his 80 years on Earth, Antigonus lost both the war and his life at Ipsus. The retreat left Pyrrhus sour. He had routed the enemy on his flank, impressing his superiors with his courage. And yet, it was all for naught. For a time, Pyrrhus wondered if he had tied himself to a sinking ship, yet he remained loyal to Demetrius. In time, that loyalty would pay off. But not in the way that he had expected. Well, yeah, they have a powerful military, economic, technology. They're they're good on everything. They're top Macedonians for a reason. My two Greek allies, so I should just barely could play, <laughs> to be honest. And purple was very useful. Killed even more units than me. He actually killed more units than purple as well. It's amazing. And for me, I was cleaning the buildings. Yeah, not that much of resources at all. But Siam? Oh gosh. And the villager high 45. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and I got the second worst. The among the ones that were alive, uh, it was me, <laughs> the worst. So very bad in terms of villagers because it's a totally rush map. So yeah, folks, I hope you enjoy. Please, if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe. And I see you next time. Thank you so much for more Age of Empires 2 The Rise of Rome play. Thank you so much.